This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish, welcome to the show. Up on this episode we're doing a review of the brand new Blumhouse movie which is in cinemas nationwide at the moment. The movie is Night Swim directed by Bryce McGuire. Now we're going to do some kind of spoilery territory reviews of this one after the first break. So if you've not seen the movie yet and you don't want to have any of the movie at all spoiled for you in the slightest, you want to go in blind, then I would suggest that you just hit pause on this, add it to something you can watch later on, go check out the movie and come back and chat to us then. However, if you are someone that has already been out, you've seen the movie, or you just don't really care about spoilers when it comes to movie reviews, then continue watching out please do not say that you were not warned. Now, this is a f- officially kicking back off podcast under the stairs this year. Uh, tomorrow, you will be getting the first of a four-part series coming twice a week until we conclude it, which will cover my top 20 horror movies of 2023, which will kick off the show proper for 2024. So I'm very much looking forward to getting those ones out. I've been doing a lot of last-minute cramming of movies to make sure they get across the line in time that we can put together my definitive list. And always, with all these things, this is just my opinion. This is not me telling you that if you like Night Swim or you like or dislike any of the movies on my list that will be coming up over the next two weeks, that you are wrong and I am right. I would never be so bold to presume such a thing. So with that all in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to take a first break just now. You're going to see the trailer for the movie Night Swim, which like I say is available in cinemas nationwide via Blumhouse. When I return, we're going to be giving you some reviews and thoughts, musings if you will, on that movie. We're going to be doing it right after this. Marco. Hello. (laughs) Marco. Ronan, Marco. Marco. There's something bad in the water. And it's after all of us. Marco. Night swim, January 5th, rated PG-13. And welcome back. So, Night Swim, the first of the kind of cinematic horror movies we're going to be getting this year. First of many, by the looks of things. I think there's going to be quite a few horror movies making their way to the big screen this year, which is always exciting. We're going to get them from a variety of different sources. The ones that are distributed by the Blumhouses of the world. The ones that are going to come from our our friends at Sony. I don't know why I'm saying they're our friends, but let's just say they are. Um, And of course, E24 will always have something up their sleeve. The kind of long-anticipated return of Mia Goth's Maxine character will be winging its way to cinemas this year as well. So it's going to be busy, but Night Swim is the first. This is us getting our first crack at it, and without, you know, overstepping the mark, it's safe to say this one will do well financially. Blumhouse movies tend to make quite a bit of money upon their release, because they don't cost a lot of money to make, and everything's tightened up, designed specifically. It's the old Corman kind of approach to making movies everything's done very tight and as a result uh the margins to make profit are always are always pretty high <laughs> you're, you're gonna recruit your money pretty quick so let me give you some details on the movie next one is directed by bryce mcguire and it's based on the screenplay by bryce mcguire and rod blackhurst it's also based on their short m- movie of the same title from 2014 it stars wyatt russell kerry condon Amelia Hoferl, uh, Gavin Warren, Jodie Long, Eddie Martinez, Elijah G. Roberts, Rahuna Panarki, Ben Sinclair, 
Eliezer, and some other folks around the movie as well. Synopsis is listed on IMDb as a woman swimming in her pool at night is terrorised by an evil spirit. So, Night Swim, to be honest, I don't know what I expected from it, to be, to, to be fair. I had seen the trailer for it, so I kind of anticipated this movie is going to be, for the most part, centrally dumb around the premise of a haunted pool. And I was more interested to see how they were going to get away from that or what the techniques were going to be used to bring forward a feeling of dread around, uh, you know, a part of a property that you don't actually physically have to go into. Um, yeah, like, for, for all intents and purposes, Jaws works because people didn't know there was a shark in the water. Like, the, the people going to spend their, their weekend at the beach weren't expecting to go in the water and be chomped on by a shark. And the people that knew about it are the ones that are complicit in the horror. In the case of this one here, once it's established that there's something kind of weird in the pool, you would expect things to go a different direction. And the movie never really does that. If anything, it becomes relatively trite in the ways that it gets people into the pool in a way which doesn't necessarily make sense at all. Um, at its, at its kind of central core here we have a family uh, family is kind of on the rebound of recovery the father played by Wyatt Russell an actor that I genuinely think is brilliant is a former like kind of major league baseball player who has suffered a series of medical setbacks it's, I think it's alluded to that he might have MS and as a result of that he is now trying to cope trying to acclimate to a life where he's probably never going to have the limelight, that one thing that he was really good at, again um, he is uh, surrounded by his long suffering wife who's had to very much in love with him but has had to put up with putting her dreams on hold to kind of move city to city with him for whatever team he plays for and his two kids, his eldest daughter is a kind of chip off the old block, um, the youngest son is like kind of crushed under the weight of expectation of what his father wants him to do which is play baseball the movie spends a lot of time kind of linking back to baseball in a way which makes me think that maybe the director has a background played baseball or something as someone that knows very little about the ins and outs of this I found a distraction in the movie that we kept coming back to um, but they moved to this uh, this house and <laughs> The house has a pool in the background which hasn't been used. Um, early on when they're viewing the house, uh, Wyatt Russell's character falls in and whilst he's in there, uh, inadvertently thinks about like a wish that he would have to be back playing baseball and after that, um, because his therapist tells him to do some hydrotherapy, so he has to be in the pool, that's the conceit here. After that we get like section after section where he is essentially getting stronger by being in the pool. He becomes a medical marvel. Uh, he gets better, stronger, faster. And once that starts happening, weird things start happening in the pool. The pool starts to act out in a particular way which looks like it's trying to kill people in it. And that's your setup. That's the kind of main setup for this one. Um, the reveal, and like I said, this there's no way to get around this without really getting into spoilers, so I do apologise. Once again, if you do not want to know anything else about the movie, please hit stop on the video. It's nice and easy. This is the second warning I'm giving you now. Um, but essentially, the the pool, or the, the property was built on, wait for it, uh, Sacred Ground. Because we've never had that in a horror movie before. And it has kind of has the ability to grant healing wishes to people, but at the cost of a life, right? So you get your wish, I get my life, everyone's happy and we move on. At the start of the movie, at the cold open, a young girl, a young Asian girl dies in the pool. And it's, you know, we're, we're never really, we see her brother who is unwell in the house and we know no more details about anything. And later on in the movie, it's revealed that actually the mother had made this deal with the pool to sacrifice her youngest to save her oldest or something. Um, the, I didn't hate it. 
I, I thought I hated it when I came out, actually. I came out and my, my eyes had rolled so far back in the back of my head, I looked like The Undertaker. Um, I didn't hate... I, I did find it just really banal and almost kind of like the worst cynical box-ticking exercise for a horror movie. It didn't surprise me, and it was a fact that I didn't know before seeing the movie that it was actually based on a short because to me it felt like a short, it felt like a movie which you probably do 10 minutes worth, you get a really cool story about this pool that you make a wish in and then it comes back and gets you. Or just the idea of a haunted pool. Like, see if that cold open had been the original short, that would have made sense to me. Um, but it was kind of like, while watching the movie, I was just reminded of tropes, ideas and scares from other movies that are just infinitely better than this. Um, we get everything here from Insidious, Poltergeist, The Ring, Dark Water, um, It, with a huge bit of It in this one here. More recently, The Black Phone, um, there's a bit of that in here. And like once you started to see those elements come about, it kind of got to the point where I checked out, if I'm honest. I just never really, none of the scares really hit me in any way, shape or form. That's not uncommon in modern horror movies. I'm not one who genuinely gets jump scares in movies. But I do appreciate a good setup and a good delivery. I don't think this movie had that. I think if anything, I think it was pretty telegraphed almost from the start how I thought this was going to go. Even down to the ending, which I kind of called as well, which... To me, just shows that this is this is very familiar territory. If I'm, you know, if I'm picking out how I think the ending's gonna go, I also don't like. There's a modern trend, and when I say modern trend, the last two big Blumhouse movies that I've seen, that being um, the Black Phone and this being uh, Night Swim, both have this kind of central idea of like a shitty father figure who is somehow redeemed by the act he does at the end. Uh, why is Russell's character in this, just in general, is pretty awful. Um, he is, uh, like, wholly obsessed with himself. Uh, narcissistic. He is unattentive. And... Not the worst parent in the world, by any, like, compared to the black phone parent. He's, you know, he's... He's a saint, but just like a, just a generally pretty shitty guy throughout the movie. So when his kind of his selfless act comes up at the end, I never felt like well, you know that arc's redeemed at all. I just kind of felt like that's the obvious thing to do for the narrative. I actually think the black phone was worse. Uh, just to lump this in to fill out my point, and the black phone that parent beats up his kids, and at the end he's all sniveling and happy that they're alive. And I kind of feel like that's a weird way to end your movie. Am I supposed to feel sympathy for this child beater? Probably not. Um, so yeah, I didn't. I didn't particularly like that. Mercifully, the the night swim was quite a short movie overall. It just lands in just over an hour and a half. Um, it never really fills out too much in the way it points to the... the even the, the idea of where the haunting comes from is still relatively loose. And I got to... Get to the end of the movie in, in, in a state of thinking, why do I feel there's going to be a sequel here? And I genuinely hope there isn't. There's a... I can see that I mentioned earlier on, that the premise of having to go... Like the only way this ghost is going to get you if you keep going into the pool. Um, and then the way the family ultimately constantly ends up back in the pool seemed very confusing to me. Uh, there's a story about a couple that owned the house before them and they never used the pool for the full time that was in there. And it did spark a conversation that me and Baz had outside the cinema where I was like, you would just fill it up. Which is ultimately what they do at the end of the movie here. They fill the pool up with dirt cement, you would imagine. Because um, it's a big back garden. So the idea that a family would stay in that house and just have the pool there, but never do anything with the pool, as opposed to filling it up and using it for, I don't know, something more practical in a back garden, bit of decking, a lounge area, something like that just felt wholly silly to me. Um, like, really silly to me, to the point that I actually... The more I thought about it afterwards, the more I felt like the actual premise works well in a short because it doesn't give you any time to think about it. And in a longer movie, you're left with too much time to think about it, which is ultimately where it becomes non-satisfying. Um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, no one seemed pleased when they came out of the cinema from the view I saw. I've seen the movie take a bit of a kick in online. I don't think it's the worst thing I've seen. I don't think it's good either, if I'm honest. I think it's indicative of lazy horror filmmaking. Now, there's an audience for that, and that's not to be dismissive to people that like kind of more generic um, the A to B to C formula horror movies. It's not people that don't watch as much horror movies as I do. So for them, this might be the first time they're seeing these concepts executed on the screen. And as a result, they probably have a greater impact. And that's maybe where this movie is targeted overall. I don't think it's targeted to horror fans, because I think if you've seen enough horror movies, this ain't moving the needle, you know, getting the heart pumping a little bit harder or anything. If anything at all, it's, like I said before, reminding you of movies that did these ideas, these scares and these storytellings infinitely better than this, which... I don't know. I, like, short stories very rarely make great full lengths. Um, in recent memory, the Mama short is terrifying. The movie, not so much because we had to put a lot of story to explain things that as an audience member you don't have to think about when you're watching a you know, three minute short. I um, also think of Lights Out. Um, I thought the Lights Out trailer was, you know, well, the Lights Out short uh, was excellent. I found the movie, for the most part, better than what it should have been, but still lacking something. And Night Swim falls into that category as well. So yeah, I, I didn't love it, if I'm honest. Um, certainly didn't hate it. I've kind of went over it in my head. Originally, I was coming out with a 1 on it, and with time, I've said it's probably a 2. It's a 2 out of 5. Didn't like it. Remember our grading here is 1 didn't like it, 2, sorry, 1 hated it, 2 didn't like it, 3 liked it, 4 really liked it, 5 loved it with 0.5s being included. This gets a 2. Um, I will be lucky if I remember having seen this movie at the end of the year. That's how banal it actually is. A beige movie, if ever there was one. And that's the review, ladies and gents. So, thank you very much for checking out this episode of Podcast Under the Stairs. It feels great to be back in 2024. This was a sneaky, unofficial like return. The main return is tomorrow when we drop the first of our four-part series looking at my top 20 horror movies of 2023. We'll be kicking that off tomorrow with movies 20 through 16. Um, slightly longer reviews on those, a little bit more in-depth as to what I liked and what I didn't like about those movies and why they ended up in the placement they have. Um, thank you very much for checking out this video. If you like it and you're checking us out on YouTube, then what I would say is please hit a subscribe, please hit a like, leave me comments as well. If you enjoyed Night Swim, please let me know what it was that you enjoyed about it. Um, if you think I'm going off slightly harsh on it, or you think I'm not being harsh enough, because like I say, I've read some reviews this year where this movie's been hauled through the coal. Um, so... Yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, if you're checking us out on the kind of Spotify podcast app or via Anchor, which both allow video play, then please make sure you're subscribed there as well. Answer the question that comes up at the end of the episode. And for all those that are checking out the audio version of this on any of the podcatchers out there, thank you very much for your continued support. Make sure you hit subscribe that we get access to the almost 1,300 episodes of Podcasts Under the Stairs that are out there for you. The podcast under the stairs will return tomorrow with uh, numbers 20 through 16 of my top 20 horror movies of 2023. But until then, wherever you are, whatever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. This is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs and I am signing off. <laughs>